Hey guys, coming at you today with an awesome recipe, only one net carb for one of these red velvet cupcakes with cream cheese frosting. So let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome back. If you're new here, thanks for joining me. My name's Alicia and I'm a pastry chef with a severe sweet tooth. Here, I try to bring you the best keto desserts possible. So if you enjoyed these recipes, please consider hitting the subscribe button, hitting the bell icon so you don't miss a video, leaving me a comment and sharing with all your friends. It all helps my channel grow and to bring you new keto desserts every Saturday. Today, some awesome red velvet cupcakes. And I have not yet done it with the dye in it. I followed like a natural red velvet cupcake recipe when I started experimenting with a keto version. And I tried using beet powder and my pomegranate flavored beet powder and it gave it a hint of red, but it wasn't enough to make a difference. And it started tasting kind of funny with the pomegranate flavor and the beet flavor. So I make it without the coloring. Today I'm gonna make it for the first time with the coloring, which I, don't like to do it but it looks really nice so i'm gonna do that today and show you this recipe this is my go-to cupcake recipe now like even without the dye like it is just a delicious chocolate cupcake recipe and it's not super chocolatey because red velvet isn't a super chocolate cupcake so i've modified it a couple of times to make vanilla and chocolate cupcakes so i'll be bringing you those recipes soon also but today, red velvet. So to start out with, I have my bowl here. I don't have any more measuring cups that are clean. So I'm gonna do 12 fluid ounces of oil. This does work with butter also. Just make sure you're really soft butter and you're gonna whip it with your sugar. It ends up being a way thicker batter though with the butter. So it's a little bit harder to do cupcakes. And I'm using an avocado oil. Of course, the recipe called for vegetable oil, but not using that and then i already weighed out my granular mungford erythritol blend you can use straight erythritol if you want you cannot use like a splenda or a straight stevia that is super concentrated sweetness because you need this amount of bulk in here to make a cupcake batter you can't just have this much sweetener in all of this and it's going to be sweet enough but it's not going to give you enough volume to actually hold your cupcakes together so you got to use something that's one for one with regular sugar. So we're adding that into our oil and we're going to beat this. Oop, I'm locked. <laughs> Before we beat that, I'm going to explain the rest of the recipe. Basically, the rest of the recipe is a combination of dry ingredients and buttermilk. I will put all the ingredients up on the screen for you. But trick with this, there's no leavening agent in this dry mix. You have a teaspoon and a half of baking soda that you activate with some vinegar at the very end and fold into your cupcakes. And this makes them rise and it makes them super fluffy. And I figured out the ratio of dry ingredients to make it just perfect. It's soft and moist and delicious. And we made our own buttermilk today with cashew milk that's unsweetened and a little bit of vinegar. Supposedly what original red velvet cake was, it was not food dye. It was a reaction between the alkalized cocoa powder and the vinegar in the buttermilk. But it just makes it kind of like a reddish brown color. It's not red. So I'm not sure exactly the origins of where red started getting put into it, but that's the original way it was red velvet cake. So this is a recipe that was the original kind of red velvet cake with no dye in it. So instead of the dye, you'd add a quarter cup of water but I am gonna add the quarter cup of dye today, which I feel really wrong doing. But I want it to look nice in the thumbnail, and if I put red velvet cupcakes and they're not red, I feel like people are gonna be like, eh, I'm not clicking on that. <laughs> I went to three stores to get red dye too, cause I forgot it at the first one, the second one didn't have it, and then finally the third one. We're gonna add that after we add all this before the vinegar goes in. The only other thing that goes in here is four eggs. They are at room temperature, but it doesn't really matter too much because oil's already not solid at room temperature, so it's not going to solidify anything. And I already sifted my dry ingredients, just giving them a whisk. 
I did add salt to this because we are not using salted butter. I am using IsoPure Chocolate Whey Protein. It has zero carbs compared to most other whey proteins. I'll have in my blog post how to make chocolate whey protein if you, all you have is unflavored. But they put extra some extra ingredients in the whey protein that I think makes a softer cake when you have the flavored stuff. So we're gonna beat this, add our eggs, and then we're gonna alternate buttermilk and dry ingredients. Okay, our sugar doesn't really dissolve too much in there. I'm gonna do two teaspoons of vanilla. You can add the vanilla whenever you want, really. Put in your buttermilk if you want. I'm gonna add one egg at a time and beat it up. Okay, once all the eggs are in, give it a scrape and one more beat and then you're gonna alternate the buttermilk and the dry ingredients together oh and before i forget <laughs> i'm gonna preheat my oven to 350 because once this is done we're getting in the cupcake things and into the oven so like a third of the dry ingredients third of the wet and then give it a scrape down after each third addition I'm excited to see the red. I really like red cupcakes. I wish I could get it without using red food coloring. <laughs> I think there are natural red dyes you can buy, but I feel like you still, because it's so chocolatey, you still wouldn't get the color because they're so much lighter than the red number 40 or whatever it is. One more wet, one more dry. I couldn't believe when this baking soda thing worked. Like, it gives so much lift when our baked goods usually don't get lift without like tons of leavening agents. It's crazy. Okay, time for the dye. A little scared. Try not to make a huge mess either. I don't know if this is exactly gonna be a quarter cup. I might have to add a little bit of water too. Oh, so much red. scary. I'm going to hold this up here. In it goes. I feel horrible doing it, but I want them to look pretty. It's a lot of dye. I tried to find a workaround. I did like eight tests. Okay, there's our red dye. Nuclear red. Whew. Now to add our secret rising agent. I usually just add it and mix it in myself. So two teaspoons of vinegar into our ba Ooh, baking soda. Don't need that much. Mix it up. And into the batter. Just give a little fold in action. Red cake. It looks so pretty. Okay. Into the muffin tins. You should get 22 to 24 cupcakes. And I just use this middle scoop of my set. I'll have that linked below. And I just do like a heaping. You don't need to fill it up very much. It actually probably only halfway. And it puffs up to the top. So I figured out this batter using it for all my cupcakes. So most of my cupcakes, only one net carb each. Pretty crazy. Can't tell me this doesn't look really awesome. Just wish it wasn't bad for you. Or so they say. Who knows, right? So we can add a little bit more in. So we're really heaping one of these. It's been a while since I only made 24. Okay. 24 red velvet cupcakes. Put these in for about 20 minutes. I'm gonna do 10, turn them and feel them and see if we want another 10 to 12. We'll be back when they come out of the oven. Okay, they only took 18 minutes. They are no longer mushy. They bounce back. 
And it looks so good. So we gotta let these cool to the touch at least and we can get them out and then we'll make our cream cheese frosting. Okay, took a little break while these are cooling. Still a little warm, but we gotta get on to making the frosting. So hopefully they'll be cool by the time we get the frosting done. We're making a traditional cream cheese frosting. One block of cream cheese. Pretty simple, but the biggest thing with cream cheese frosting, I made cream cheese frosting in my carrot cake cupcake recipe. I'll link that up there if you wanna make carrot cupcakes. Kind of messed up because my cream cheese was not soft enough and I didn't whip it enough. It kind of got like clumpy and separated. So best thing to do is to have super mushy cream cheese and butter. Whoa, bowl down, stay. I'm gonna whip this up for a minute and then I'm just gonna add the butter sticks. Pretty soft. Three sticks of butter softened it is very soft it's very hot in my house right now all closed up to do videos borderline <laughs> melted and to this we're just adding powdered monk fruit erythritol because of the cream cheese cooling effect really doesn't happen with this at least i can't really detect it so i just use all powdered monk fruit erythritol whip this up until it's nice and combined give it a couple scrape downs And I do 240 grams of powdered monk fruit erythritol. That is approximately two cups. But every time I measure with cups and stuff, it never ends up being what the measurement is on the back of the package, which it says a quarter cup is 30 grams. So 30, 60, 90, 120. That's supposed to be a cup. But I always just weigh because it's easier than trying to guess. And if your bowl is too small, shake it up like this. You definitely want to sift powdered sweetener, especially sometimes it's really clumpy. I always use my protein scoops or scoops in my bags. It helps a lot. That way you're not dirtying spoons every time you gotta grab out ingredients and stuff. Add a little bit at a time because we don't want it flying all over the place. Okay, and I'm going to give it a scrape down. And then the last ingredient is two teaspoons of vanilla extract. And that is it. I'm going to whip it until it's nice and fluffy. Whoa, almost lost it. That would not have been good. This is all the vanilla extract I have left. But I had to use my good stuff. I guess I probably should with frosting. It always makes sense to use a better vanilla if you have like pure and imitation. Imitation in your cupcakes, and then the really good stuff on top. You know it's getting there when it's not really yellow anymore. You do not want it to look like you have just straight butter in there. You want it to be fluffy and white look. See, that's pretty darn fluffy. If you don't use salted butter, definitely add some salt into your frosting. But I use salted butter. Got a bag with a tip on it. And our cupcakes are still warm, of course. So I might pop them into the fridge if I can find room. I always put the piping bag over my hand and have an opening. So that way you can just push it in. You can also put it over a glass if you can't do that at the same time. Right, I don't think our red velvet cupcakes turned out as red. They're more dark than a normal one because we used the isopure chocolate whey protein. So if you use unflavored and don't add any extra cocoa powder, I would maybe just add another like couple teaspoons of like a liquid stevia to make up for the sweetness of the chocolate whey protein that you're not adding and you'll probably get a brighter red color. I filled up my bag too much. You want to have room up top to twist it. I don't want it all coming out the top. There we go. That's ready to go but 
our cupcakes are still a little warm. So we're gonna let it cool for a few more minutes and then we're gonna get to piping on them. Cupcakes are finally cool. So we can get to frosting them. Let's go. So I have this tip on here. It's really cool because it creates like a rose, but I don't like it as much because I want more frosting. To do a rose, you start in the middle and you go around like this and it creates like a rose, but I always like more frosting. <laughs> So I tend to do a big pile in the middle and then go around. I still overfilled it. I got stuff squeezing out the top. This is why you don't overfill it because now it's all messy up top. My frosting is getting really soft because it's so warm in here. Ah, it was quick. One more refill, hopefully. Definitely gotta keep these in the fridge, especially during summertime. They show hot and melty. Very pretty. Okay, still have some frosting left, but not too bad. You can always add a little bit more to them if you want. I'm gonna get cleaned up here and we'll be back to try them. Right, you can see my mound of dishes behind me. If you didn't know, I shoot like three videos in a day, so. That's a lot, but these are our keto red velvet cupcakes with cream cheese frosting and only one net carb per cupcake. Freaking awesome. It's time to slice into one of these. That is pretty bright red. Hopefully it tastes as good as my other ones. Well, I'll let you know if it's not worth putting the red dye in because it doesn't taste very good. I'll let you know. It's nice inside. It's definitely a lot darker than a regular red velvet cake. Super moist inside. Such a good cake. Like this is my go-to cake recipe now. It is so soft, sweet, delicious. It is just the best keto cake. And that cream cheese frosting, mm. these are amazing. You don't need the red dye. It doesn't add anything to it, except for it makes it look a little bit prettier. It is so good with or without it. Mm. It is so good. I tell you, I love my job. Make all this delicious food. I hope you guys enjoy this recipe. If red velvet cake is one of your favorites, I hope I'm able to help you out in that capacity. If you haven't had it in a while, I would love to know if you try these and let me know in the comments below how they turned out. I'll definitely be bringing you more cupcake recipes soon. Don't forget to check out my Amazon links and my Perfect Keto link in the description box below along with the blog link to the full recipe. I did put a little thank you button at the bottom of the video. Someone suggested it, so I figured I'd throw it on there. YouTube does take a percentage though, so I also did a buy me a coffee link in my description box. So if you want to click on that, you can donate to buy me a coffee. I really appreciate anything. I'm not asking for anything, but people have been asking me to put it there. So I did. I hope you guys enjoy. Give the video a thumbs up if you did. And as always, I'll be back with many more keto dessert recipes. Bye guys.